think about it, I paint. It's, uh, it was almost inevitable considering the incitements which took place in Israel at that period of time against the Prime Minister. I was shocked when I saw the uh, uh, demonstrations and in fact uh, I remember that uh, I was uh, driving, uh, at that time I was uh, mayor of Jerusalem and I was driving with a colleague of mine, a uh, member of Knesset, Dan Meridor, and we were on the way and when we heard on the broadcasts what was taking place in that famous demonstration in the uh, Zion Square in Jerusalem, we just turned around and went to a restaurant and said, we are not part of this. And we never took part in all of these uh, demonstrations because you, it you, was in the air. You were both the Likud members, right? I was at that time, sure. I yeah. was a, a member of Likud. I was a member of parliament. I was both mayor and a member of parliament. It was shocking. So, uh, and when it happened, it seemed like it was almost the inevitable outcome of what took place before. And, and you should re recall that the, 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 the big rally, which at that time was in the, uh, uh, what is now known as the Rabin Square, but at that time it was the uh, uh, square of uh, the Kings uh, of Israel uh, Square. Uh, it was uh, organized in advance in order to somehow oppose the incitements which took place and in order to rally uh, a degree of support in the Israeli public opinion uh, for the Prime Minister. And the outcome of this rally was that he uh, was assassinated. Uh, I can't forget it. I will never forget it. Uh, and uh, I uh, think that, uh, unfortunately, not everyone that was part of creating this incitement has uh, learned the lessons of what happened then and what might happen if a similar incitement will take place in another period. And we, we thought 26 years ago that that uh, was really uh, a, a point that we cannot cross anymore. But since uh, 1995, things on, on the Israeli discourse and the uh, Israeli politics has become more and more and more extreme. Are you afraid that another assassination might happen? Well, I hope that the, uh, the uh, law enforcement agencies in Israel uh, have somehow uh, learned certain lessons from the past and therefore will be more effective uh, in uh, protecting the, uh, those who will be the targets for a potential incitement of the nature that may lead to uh, another attempt. Uh, that's first. However, I'm not sure that all the uh, political players in Israel uh, understood what happened then and what might happen again. Because you hear time and again uh, statements uh, that are absolutely uh, un unacceptable. You know, when, when members of the Knesset called the uh, prime minister who was elected by a majority of members of Knesset, in the Knesset, according to all the democratic rules, they call him an illegitimate prime minister. He stole the premiership. What does it mean to, to more extreme people? It means that if he is not legitimate, that if he is not in the place where he should be, then maybe some people may think, why should we not remove him from that place? And, uh, you know, the rest is almost uh, inevitable. So I, I think that not everyone uh, learned the lessons of the past, and we have to be very careful, and we have to caution, and we have to warn, uh, and uh, we have to make a national effort, a concerted effort by everyone uh, in order to prevent this kind of spirit to uh, dominate the uh, discourse in the Israeli politics. Yeah, you know, um, many in Israel say, well, this assassination was uh, successful, quote-unquote. Uh, it stopped the peace process. And actually, the peace process with the Palestinians is pretty much stuck since then, even during your tenure as a prime minister. Uh, will it ever change? Will it ever move on? Well, you know, I have a somewhat different perspective. It's true, it's been stopped until I took over. 
Uh, although also uh, there were uh, meetings between Sharon uh, while he was prime minister and uh, with uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, the Palestinian leader, and I took part in many of those meetings. I remember the uh, meeting in uh, uh, in Aqaba with uh, King Abdullah and uh, uh, the uh, Abu Mazen, President Bush, uh, and. Uh, uh, the late Colin Powell, the then Secretary of State of the United States, who was very active and very, very enthusiastic about the p potential of uh, contact. So it was, it was moving ahead. It's true that the distance between Sharon and Abu Mazin was uh, uh, considerable, but, but they met, they talked, they respected each other. And then when I took over, I decided that this will be the landmark of my prime ministership. From day one, I said I'll do everything in my power to resume the meaningful negotiations between us and the Palestinians. And I thought that Abu Mazen, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Abbas, president of the Palestinian Authority, was an appropriate and a decent uh, partner for these efforts. And we came very, very close. You know, uh, I don't want to go into a uh, detailed account now, but the efforts that were made at the time that I was prime minister to overthrow me, and the, the monies that were invested, and the investigations which were uh, uh, sponsored, encouraged, and uh, um, financed by uh, political rivals, were precisely for the purpose of trying to stop what appeared to have been... You've been saying that, uh, that derailed uh, uh, all your efforts. Pardon? That derailed your efforts. Yeah, yeah. You said well, that you know that we had but the Annapolis conference. Yeah, we don't want to go into this, but we did have uh, a meaningful negotiations, and we were very, very close, may, may, perhaps closer than ever in the history of the contacts between us and the Palestinians to make peace. And this is not what I say only, but also what Abu Mazen said. So what I want to emphasize... No, is not to go into the details of what happened to me, but the efforts which were exerted by every possible political opponent, sponsored by millions of dollars from outsiders in order to stop this peace process at any cost. Uh, it, it's now that you tried, and maybe tried hard even, uh, now there's a new uh, government in Israel. It seems that it's uh, running on neutral. Uh, can't move forward, can't move backwards. It doesn't want to move forward. <laughs> I think that's the point. Look, I, I personally have a, a lot of respect for Naftali Bennett. I announced before the elections that I will not support him, that I don't think that he should be prime minister because I didn't want to have the right wing leading the policy of the government of Israel. But uh, as a result of the circumstances which uh, developed afterwards, I... Uh, was very, I, I, I prayed that the efforts, which was largely, I must say, was uh, orchestrated by uh, Yair Lapid, uh, resulted in the creation of this government. Now, the, the basis of this, the DNA of this government uh, is that it's not supposed to do anything controversial. So they can't move forward with the peace process, number one, because Naftali Bennett doesn't want to accept the two-state solution and doesn't want to even meet with uh, Abu Mazen. And of course, uh, on the other hand, uh, the uh, uh, left wing of the government understands that if they will uh, uh, squeeze uh, Naftali Bennett, they will break up this government and uh, we will get back to uh, square one with Netanyahu. So the basis of this government is to bring Israel back into normalcy, to change the political atmosphere, to change the nature of the uh, relations uh, of the different uh, factions in the Israeli so society. Maybe we are in sort of and an interim phase. Period, yeah. Right, yeah. We are in a transition period. It will take a year, it will take two years, I don't know how long. At the end of it, there will have to be a government with a very firm commitment to move forward with the peace process on the basis of two states, because there is no alternative to this, and everyone knows it, and everyone knows that this is not something that we can make as a favor 
to the Palestinians. This is the interest of the state of Israel to have a solution on the basis of two states, the sooner the better.